Hello, my fellow humans, and welcome back to another pick a card reading with your girl here at Scatter Love Tarot coming at you with a how does your family and this could be friends, right? Describe you. So, these are the people that are closest to you. How do they describe you to others? A couple of things. Keep in mind, do these are general readings, so please take what resonates and leave what does not, knowing that as you interact with the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing, it does allow me an opportunity to connect directly with your beautiful energy and get you out more resonant readings. Also, if you are interested in supporting the channel further, make sure you check out the description box down below as everything that you need will be linked there. You can reach out to me via email for a personal reading. Knowing that there are only a finite amount of spaces available each week, they do fill up rather quickly and it is first come first serve. However, if you send me an email, I will let you know further information as well as how many spaces are available still. And make sure you follow me on over to Scatter Love Radio. It's my podcast. You'll find the link down below. It's just a chill session where you get to hang out with me and, yeah, bring up your favorite drink and we'll just get talking and wondering and thinking about the world and the universe as a whole. <laughs> awesome. So while you're here, um, what am I going to draw from today? I guess we're going to do these today gonna do these I didn't want to get really far into depth but we'll do those today okay so things are gonna be changing this month I'm just putting a heads up out um, I know I said it on one of my prior videos however just keep an eye out you will be seeing some new things coming in this month I'm super excited and everybody I'm just going to hold on to your butts. <laughs> Why? Because it is about to be a crazy, crazy month, okay? So by the end of August, you should notice some major changes to the channel, all for the good, all for the better, bringing you more content, bringing you more, just more space, more time, more abilities to connect, right? So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know down below how it's working out for you. If you have any suggestions on tarot readings that you would like to hear, I am always open to those suggestions. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I've got quite a bit of work in front of me for you. So let's get your prayer underway and find out what's going on in the reading. My beloved source, this prayer is for any and all who come on to this video. It's a prayer of knowing that sometimes, even though we do have family and close friends, that we do feel alone and we feel as though we're still misunderstood or if we're not heard or if we're not seen. And this is a prayer to open us up to seeing you, to knowing that you're walking with us each and every step of the way and that you've accepted us as a whole being because in your eyes, we are perfect exactly as we are. Whether people are accepting us or not, that does not negate the truth of our selves, our being, our soul, and our hearts. And sometimes we just lose our way and we need that help. We need that assistance to be brought back to a place of knowing that we are enough as we are. That we are whole as we are and regardless of how people talk about us regardless of what people think about us that in this moment we are everything that we need to be and that that in itself is enough i pray that you open everyone's hearts to this understanding that you open their hearts to their truest self and that you open their hearts to knowing your unconditional love and your guidance is true and may they be open to that deep, deep knowledge within that helps guide them back home to you. As these words are spoken unto this space, so shall they be. Amen. Aho. I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, I picked a new incense today and this one smells fantastic. Oh, yes. I love it. Anyways. <laughs> I'm always excited about that. So let's pull these out. My apologies. I do need a drink real quick. Coming at you with some cotton mouth. Been laughing a lot today. So, all right, let's get a good shuffle on these. 
as always, I'm bringing back the Intuition Oracle. You all know how I love these cards. So yeah, let's give them a go. Alright, Source. How does this collective, my tribe, how does their family and their friends and their loved ones describe them to others? Right, so for pile number one, what oracle card is going to help us understand how pile one's loved one describes them to others? How does pile one's loved ones describe them, source? What oracle card will help us understand that better? How does pile one's... Okay. Maybe. So you got two cards. Wonderful. So for pile number two, source, how does pile number two's loved ones describe them? Thank you. And for pile number three, source, how does pile number three's loved ones describe them? All right, so let me move these up real quick. Let's get them in line. So for pile number one, we do have this beautiful peach moonstone to choose from. For pile number two, we do have this beautiful green aventurine for you to choose from. And for pile number three, we have this piece of raw aquamarine for you to choose from. So pile one, pile two, and pile three. And whichever one you are drawn to, that should be the pile for you. And with that being said, I will see you over on your perspective Hello, pile. my fellow human. If you were drawn to this peach moonstone, or if you were drawn to this card image, or this card during the shuffle, then this is going to be your reading on how do your loved ones describe you. It's going to be how they describe you to others, to themselves, how they think about you. We'll see what comes out during the reading. Um, we'll check that out at the end. But first and foremost, keeping in mind that these are general readings. So please take what resonates and leave what does not. Knowing that as you interact with the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing, it does allow me an opportunity to directly connect with your energy and get you out more resonant readings. If you are interested in supporting the channel further, you will find all those links down below in the description box, or you can email me for a personal reading. Uh, keeping in mind there are a finite amount of spaces available each week. They do fill up rather quickly. However, if you email me, I will let you know how many spaces are available as well as further information and knowing that it is first come, first serve, okay? Also, make sure you check me out at my podcast at scatter love radio it's just a chill session where we get to hang out and talk about things and ponder the world around us so i really hope to see you there you'll find that link down below in the description box so I keep hearing in the phoenix i have no idea what that means but that's coming through so strong right now in the phoenix uh, maybe you're in phoenix arizona or you're in a place called phoenix or I just keep hearing in the phoenix. Uh, phoenix is someone or someone. It's a bird that rises from its ashes and is reborn, renewed. Uh, one of the uh, totems of the Scorpio Zodiac. It's, you know, Scorpio has quite a few different uh, uh, animals to it besides just the scorpion. There's the scorpion, there's the phoenix, and there's the eagle, I believe. I believe. I'm not sure. 
I know there's like three of them, but I know the Phoenix is one. So Scorpion, Scorpio energy could be very significant to you, but that's coming in really strongly here. My ear was ringing like crazy. It was like, you need to say this. And I was like, okay. So once I said it, my ear stopped ringing like crazy, which is nice because that's overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, in the Phoenix. Okay. So let's go ahead and ask the dice first. We'll find out what's going on. So source for pile number one. How does pile one's loved ones describe them, source? What do they say? What can you help us understand on how pile one's loved ones describe them? Okay, so we have Taurus, we have North Node, and we've got the third house. So this could absolutely be a friend of a friend of a friend. No, <laughs> This could be your siblings, this could be your soulmates, people that you've grown up with, this could be schoolmates that you grew up with. Yeah, there's just this energy coming in here, someone that you've known for like all your life. All my life. I pray for someone like you, and I thank God that I, that I finally found you. <laughs> so yeah, they care about you a lot, this person does. They really do, they really do care about you. They think you're an amazing individual. Uh, you know, they think you're very stable, and they, they really believe that, <clears throat> that you have changed your life so when they're describing you they describe you as someone that they're happy to know they describe you as someone that is loyal dependable steadfast uh can be stubborn <laughs> can be stubborn uh let's see you are someone who likes the nice life like you like to live in a life of luxury right but not like you're better than anyone else that's not what this is it's it's an energy of you just enjoy the finer things you enjoy having the nice things in life and there's nothing wrong with that when they describe you they talk about how your mind and your intelligence is always expanding and you're a phenomenal communicator I really feel like the energy coming through here, though, is all about how much you've changed. You have a lot of tenacity. And they talk about your drive and how reliable you truly are. Like, you're someone that they feel like they can call no matter what, and you'll come. You'll help them. It's not like you put your whole life on hold, but it's like there's that type of connection with you where they feel like you'll always be the one they can lean on. Like, you know... <laughs> That's really cute. I'm not laughing because of, I'm laughing because it's adorable, this energy that's coming in. Like, they really describe you as the the best person in their life. Like, they're like, oh, that's my, that's my, my homie. That's my ride or die. Like, that's it. They're the ones that I can count on no matter what. They'll always show up. And they really, really like that. They really love that. But they also love your stubbornness. They think that your stubbornness is just like, it's like adding to the to the whole persona like it's like oh yeah they're stubborn but because they're stubborn they've ex they have succeeded so much i mean hello you have the north node energy coming out in your reading and that's how they're describing you to others like they're like no they're they're walking in their destiny they knew exactly what they wanted to do at an early age or they've known always who they were and they don't shy away from that. And so they lean into their authentic energy and they really, really just run with it. And this, these people who are describing you admire you in a very unique way. Like they're just very blessed that they know you and they think it's really cool that you are who you are, even if you all disagree about things. They're just like, you know, pile one is just like, even if we disagree, like they they still I still admire them because they're still so sound in their beliefs like they don't let anybody deter them from how they believe about something so yeah they they really do describe you as someone who's working hard to get better working hard to live the life of your dreams like working hard to live the life of luxury working towards all that you desire what a unique individual it does feel like you are very unique. 
you are very different from a lot of people like I feel like from a lot from an early early age you definitely knew what you wanted f from life whether you knew what you were going to do or not you definitely knew what you wanted from life and then as you got older you were able to kind of walk in the path of what you want to do something that you found true passion in, something that you have connected with in your heart and even if it's not something that anyone else understands, like, your family, your friends, they're just, like, in awe of you because of how much you really walk this path. You walk the walk. You're not only someone who talks the talk, you walk the walk. So, Source, how does Pile One's loved ones describe them? So, we're going to get some further information, some more in-depth energy with the tarot. So how does Pile One's family and friends describe them? How does their loved ones describe them for Pile Number One? Thank you. Yeah. You've overcome some hardships. Okay. Let me get this out. I do have a message here that's coming through, but let me get the other cards out. How does Pile One's loved ones describe them? Whoa. Um, okay. One second. Oh, my table is flying all the way down here. All the way down there. That's my air conditioner turning on, in case you're wondering. Because I know that it comes up. You probably hear me moving around and everything. My table is squeaky. Makes noise. So, <laughs> pile number one. How does their family and loved ones describe them? Thank you, source. Yeah. Yeah, they, they feel like you've had a lot of responsibility in your life. So before I turn over those other two cards, let's just talk about this moon for a second. In the reverse, they've t they talk about how it's incredible that you've turned into the person that you've turned into because you didn't have the nurturing support that you needed as a child. Or, you know, maybe you didn't have a mother that was present or maybe you had a mother that was very toxic and they're aware of this toxicity that was in your life. And they're sitting there thinking like, how, how have they made it through? And especially if this is family, like, you know, the thing about families is like when you all get together, like, what is it? The narcissists and the sociopaths and the family can only keep up the charades for so long before everyone starts to see their true colors. And that's what it feels like. It feels like that's charade fell apart sometime and uh, uh, along the way sometime along the way and they noticed that and they saw that that you were struggling they saw that you had a lot of love to give but you didn't know how to love yourself you weren't compassionate to yourself and now that you're coming out with this Torian energy here it's saying that you've learned how to find some sense of stability in your life that at one point you did not have. That at one point did not exist for you. Right? And that could be emotional stability. But we are seeing that phys physical stability here. We see with this, it's feeling very responsible for things that are not your responsibility. So you could have had to have grown up very young. And that's something that they, they describe you as someone, yeah, someone who's had to grow up grow up very young whew, who's had a lot of things stacked against them it seems like nothing ever worked out for you and and they're just sitting in awe because it's like they've watched you go from having nothing having the bottom of the barrel to climbing your way out and making something of yourself and you may not feel like you've made something of yourself yet but you're changing and you've changed your character you've changed who you are you've changed the way you view life you have changed the way that you approach people the way you would communicate and it's through that that they're just in awe of this amazing character that you have developed into. And so when they describe you, they describe somebody who used to be meek and meager and someone who was unable to stand up for themselves, someone who was constantly in a state of anxiety. And this is very interesting that we have the eight of 
of wands coming out right next to i'm sorry the eight of swords coming out right next to the eight of wands because right now with the way they're positioned they're both talking about anxiety so this is like doubly so right massive anxiety you've dealt with a lot of anxiety some negativity some anger some fear a lot of upset and it feels like it came from outside sources trying to you know put you through it or just you got caught in a web that you weren't meant to belong in however it was just that was how fate worked you had to get caught in this web in order to become the strong individual that you are now and so the way that they describe you is as someone who had very little to look forward to or to live for or to even become a better person it's almost like you know and there's no disrespect here when i say this it's just the example they're giving me is like if you grew up in the ghetto okay or if you grew up on the wrong side of town the downside of town like section eight or something like that and you didn't have anything around you to lift you up but suddenly you become somebody who's extremely successful and who buys their own house and who gets out of the down part of town or the ghetto part of town right like that's the type of energy that's coming through here that's how they describe you it's like they had nothing going for them and yet now they have everything in life they're very stable they're very capable of providing themselves what it is that they desire without fear you build yourself up you have built yourself up and so they describe you as someone who's incredibly strong and you're an inspiration among those that love you a true and true inspiration because it's it's like if you dealt with your anxiety coming from the background that you came from then they feel like they can do it too so you inspire them to be better each and every day and they tell people that like when they do something different and people mention it to them they're like oh it's not it's not because of me it's because of pile one pile one's the one that encouraged me to change pile one is the one that inspired me to become a better version of myself and that's how they describe you to others and it's like any chance that they get where they can talk really good things about you they will right this is a really lovely pile so far yeah, again, that fear, that fear coming through here and you overcame all odds stacked against you. You overcame that. What do we have on the bottom? We have the the Pope commitment. Yeah, you're, you're a leader in your friends and family group. Like you're someone that they come to for advice. You're someone that they look up to because it's like, Look, if Pile 1 went through all these hardships and they're still a good person, they're still good natured, they still have a light heart, they still can show up and smile, I want to know how they did it. And so they come to you asking for advice because you balanced your energy, you balanced out karma, good and bad, you're, you're like in a very peaceful harmonious state right now and they come to you because you purified that old soul that old wreckage is what i'm hearing that old wreckage and and through purifying that they're capable now of getting guidance from you that actually impacts their lives in a very positive way okay so let's see what we got here look i can't with you the moon on the moon you balance this out look we were just talking about that with the pope you balance this out it went from being in the reverse to now in the upright and i know i don't read these in reversals but it's just intriguing that i would pick this deck and the first card out is the moon to clarify the moon you healed yourself you delved like this is like delving into the subconscious and healing the subconscious and really letting go of those burdens and letting look like you have these dead ducks that are floating around here but it never takes away from your beauty the focus is on you the focus is on where you're coming from it's like everything that you went through you realize it made you a better person even if it was very very hard to deal with 
Yeah, look, in the Queen of Swords, you became someone who cut people out of your life. You became a very firm and stern communicator, but with a lot of compassion. There's not just being cold and, and driven here. There's this sense of knowing that now I'm in touch with who I am. I can be direct and blunt and not worry about being rude or chaste. You know, like I can do what I need to do when I need to do it. And know it's coming from a good place because it's my intuition. So you're very intuitive and you're capable of listening to your heart with this Queen of Swords. But also correspondence here. It's like you you do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. So if you need to cut someone out of your life, you don't sit around wondering like, oh, what are they going to say? What's going to happen? Or what's going to... You like basically tell them, I'm sorry. This is not going to work for me anymore. We have to end this. And I wish you the best of luck. Have a good life. Like you're just, you're not, you're not rude about it, right? And it's all because you dealt with the big bad wolf. You dealt with the big bad wolf growing up. But again, we have this idea of balance coming in here. Let's think about being completely balanced because of having to deal with this as a child. And you found your inner child. You saved your inner child from the bullies in your life. You saved them and you overcame even though all the odds were stacked against you. So your family and friends describe you like this to others. It's like they had nothing going for them and now they have everything going for them. They're incredible. They've overcome so much. They've become so much. And they're just someone that I'm so honored to have in my life. This is too much. Yeah, this is way too much. Sorry, source. I'm not even going to take all those. That's just way too many cards. You want it to come back out? It'll come back out. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, again, this idea of being purified with the unicorn here. Unicorns are very pure. They're very wholehearted. They're very mystical and mythical beings. And so they see you as someone who has tapped into the alchemy of life. Someone who's tapped into pure magic. And you've balanced out your chakra energies here and called in some prosperity. And it's like, again, this idea of peace, like look at this image in the body of the horse, right? Of the unicorn, this image. It's like a very peaceful river and it's just such a beautiful place to be at. Then you have these swans saying this love. Maybe you've called in the love of your life or they see you calling in the love of your life and you're just someone who they look up to. Because it's like you're everything and anything all at once. You experience the magic of universe. And they just are so amazing. I don't even read the card. It says you are limitless. You can do anything you choose. Look, and then we have the union of the hearts on the bottom. A love connection that defies ex explanation. So this could be someone who you love, who you're in love with, or who is in love with you, who's also saying these things. It's interesting, though. I put this back in, and I actually put it in with three other cards, and it still came out. It still wanted to be seen. So I love that. I love that. Again, the idea of love, this, like, everlasting love. Why do I hear that song? This is an old, I think it's Jackie Velasquez's song. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believed in him will not perish but have everlasting life something like that okay but it's interesting because when i heard that everlasting life part i'm not joking i heard everlasting love that's what came in and so it's not it's like you being connected in a very beautiful way but being the true embodiment of love like just a peaceful energy so peaceful i'm so honored i get to connect with you look we have persistence patience and practicality you persevered against all odds you were persistent because of that and you had patience and you knew your time would come taurus virgo capricorn energy here it's like you knew it was gonna come you're like it's fine keep it's almost like that you're like keep stacking the odds against me because one day i'm gonna emerge and i'm gonna emerge victorious and life is going to be good yes 
Willpower with Tiger. It's Will. 37. You brought in your luck, but you stand strong, loud and proud, and you speak your truth. You're not afraid to roar when you need to roar, and you're not afraid to set stern boundaries when you need to set stern boundaries. You're not afraid to be seen. You prowl life. Life doesn't prowl you. What an it, look, and you're on your path of purpose. We have this again. Shark, we have purpose. You're living your path. Look, and peace. <laughs> Oh, I love your pile, pile one. We have the number one card with gorilla and peace. This is you. You're in this peaceful energy. And that's how they describe you. You're someone who's peaceful, who's radiant, who's glorified and beautiful. Look at that. You're blessed. You're blessed. They say that I'm lucky, but I know I'm blessed. Yeah, you're a blessed person. You're blessed because you knew your time would come. You knew your time would come. And what do we have here? Sagittarius with optimism, exploration, and freedom. We have us a free spirit, y'all. <laughs> they say that. They say that you're wild and free. There's a is that a backstreet song boy song? Wild and free. Reaching out, neck and lead of me, a helping hand to make it right. I am holding you all through the night. I'll be the one. Yeah, that's a Backstreet Boys song. Man, that came in. Yeah, so there's someone that's coming in being the one, but that's how people see you. That's how your friends, how your family sees you. They see you as the one. Like, that's the one that we can model our life after. So here we have this red. Is this a Mockingjay or what is this? A sparrow or some sort like that. Look at this fire. This fire is coming out of her hand. It's like you burnt out the old and you're bringing in the new. You're very grounded. You're very grounded. You fly with your wings. And it's like, it doesn't matter if there's mud. It doesn't matter if there's muck. It doesn't matter what there is. You're still the one that the focus is on. And that's what they sit and they describe you to others as being this incredible being who's overcome hardships and life like you've learned how to navigate life in a way that no one they've ever met before has and you've set the world on fire this girl is on fire yeah <laughs> so that's the thing like you're just blazing anew like i'm seeing that picture that image of in what is it hunger games when i don't remember her name right now when she comes out and they have the dress and she spins around and the whole dress sets on fire like that's it it's like you're the talk of the town but you're the talk of everyone that you know who's close to you especially with third house energy these are people who are very close to you people you grew up with people who know you which is what the the whole point of this reading is today but we're we're being clarified that with the dice here and they're just like I never would have thought that pile one would have been able to do that. And here they are. And I'm just, I'm in awe. The summoner. We have 49. I ask for what I want because I deserve to get it. Didn't I say that? Like you're in touch with the magic, the alchemy of life. So you're asking for what you want and you're not stopping until you get it. Look at this. You've healed the inner child. Look, she has her little doll. You have the little cherub up here watching out for you, making sure everything's okay. Like, this is like your little angel on your shoulder, like you've created your life. But look at that. Isn't this interesting? I didn't know what this card was. And wasn't I getting that earlier that you got stuck in a web that you weren't necessarily meant to get stuck in, right? I mean, everything happens for its own purposes, right? Like for a greater purpose, whether we know it at the time or not. But it just feels like when they describe you, they describe you as someone who got stuck with the responsibilities that weren't yours. Like you were taking care of someone else. You were taking care of a sick parent or you're taking care of like a drunk parent or you're taking care of yourself in a family situation that couldn't give you the love that you needed. You see what I'm saying? Like there's just something that's really heavy here that 
easily disconnected you from your inner child and now you've healed your inner child and you're coming back home to yourself and you're standing out you're definitely in the process of a glow up and that's something that they're mentioning here but when they talk about it they talk about how you've created the life that you desire with the web here you know it's not just about being stuck in it spiders are very creative individuals and if their web gets wrecked they just take it down and they start over i don't really ever see a spider complaining about the fact that oh, i gotta make my home again no they just start over and that's like how you've approached life it's like when something got messed up like i was saying bring it go ahead and bring it whatever you want to pile on me bring it because i'm just gonna keep going and because one day i know it's gonna be my time to shine and it's like that's exactly how you're seen by those that love you is someone who's shining the creator <laughs> i love this with number 17 which is eight so you may see eight 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 a lot pile one says i love playing the wonder filled game of life creatively yes you do you are a creator you ask for what you want because you know you deserve it and you're creating that life because you are a creator there is no doubt with this i loved your reading if this is your reading leave a little shark and a rainbow emoji down below and say i am blessed in my purpose and call this out and let the universe know that this is your reading leave me a thumbs up down below i'm gonna go ahead and leave it there and get on out of here but i do want to take a quick second to thank your guides your spirit messengers your angel source and my spirit guides for coming together to give us this absolutely incredible message i was truly honored to connect with you today pile one thank you so much for being here i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here and leave it there until next time stay human bye pile one hello my fellow human if you were drawn to this beautiful green aventurine or if you were drawn to this image or this card during the shuffle then this is your reading on what do your loved ones how do they describe you Okay, this could be friends, this could be family, this could be people, people you know, people you love, people you care about, okay? Uh, we could just say family here. However, I feel like family is such an open term anymore because sometimes it's not blood relatives. Sometimes it's our chosen family, okay? So keeping in mind these are general readings. So take what resonates, leave what does not, knowing that as you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it does allow me an opportunity to connect with you directly and get you out more resonant readings. Also, if you check out the description box down below you will find all the links you need if you'd like to support the channel further you may send me an email to see about a personal reading i'll get you out further information as well as how many spots are available for the week as there is only a finite amount available knowing it is first come first serve okay also you will find a link down below to hit me up at my podcast or it's just a fun chill session where we talk about everything and anything and yeah i just really hope to see you there awesome let's go ahead and get into it let's ask the dice first and foremost what we've got going on okay so source for pile number two how does pile number two's loved ones describe them how does pile number two's loved ones describe them what can you tell us source Okay, we've got 11th house, we've got North Node and Aquarius Energy. This is intriguing. The North Node also came out in Pile 1, but totally different other dice. So we've definitely got a lot of goodness coming in from those that love you, Pile 2. This definitely could be friends. With 11th house and Aquarius energy coming out together, this feels like someone that's from a like-minded group that really just loves you or a group of people from a like-minded group. I'm going to move this up just a tad. Let me see if I can get it to focus up here. There we go. That should be better. Okay. Yeah, this, this is people who love you, who care about you, family, friends, whoever it is, but from like-minded groups, they see you as someone who's very forward looking they see you as someone who's very unique and original and like you do things so different you don't conform you stand out in your own way and it's a wondrous energy and it's like this beautiful place where you're friendly you're super open you can talk with anybody you're able to network with people you make everybody feel like they belong they talk about how you're capable of 
inventing whatever it is that you want or you have all the tools available to you to move forward in life even if like say they would get stuck doing the things that you're doing they talk about and they describe how you're someone who never is able to like never get stuck for too long because you're capable of finding whatever it is that you need to move forward. And that outgoing keeps coming through. It's like, they're so outgoing. They're so amazing. And they're talking about how, like they're telling others about how you're living in your dream, how you're living in your fate. You're walking the walk. You're living in your journey. Right? This could also be a collective group that loves you. <laughs> Okay, I know we're talking about loved ones, but I guess the same would be true as if people love you and this is what they're saying. Like they're just, if these are people who are part of your, say you have a, a platform somewhere and they're part of your platform and they just absolutely love you and they pass on good news about you and they're just like, Oh my gosh, Pile 2, like, they tell everybody they can about you. Have you seen Pile 2? You need to check out their products. You need to check out their channel. You need to check out their platform. You got to get connected with Pile 2. They could help change your life. This is someone to look up to because they're looking towards the future and they get it. And they're not living in this old, same old, same old. Like, everything they do is very unique. It's very individual. It's very, it's very beautiful. That's what's coming through. It's very beautiful. And we're talking about followers and recognition here with the 11th house. So, yeah, these are people who love you from afar. I feel like there's not very many of these people that you know personally. However, I do feel like there's a few scattered in here for some of you that you know personally. But this could be a message for those of you that have absolutely been on this journey by yourself. Especially with the North Node coming through here. You could have traveled this distance this journey very very solitary and now you're getting a group of people who understand what it is that you're offering and understand you for what it is that you have this gift this ability this product this idea right we're talking about the mind's ideas here with Aquarius energy and they're just like in love with you and because of that they're they're flabbergasted like why you don't have more people and so they're trying to give you word of mouth these are like people who are helping you from the back end right like you don't know about how much they're helping you and they describe you to others as like this is the person to follow this is the person to connect with you don't understand they have the product that needs to go it needs to go viral they need to go viral they have something that no one else offers and you're someone who you're not really attached to whether people are praising you or not praising you. It's, it's, it's like I feel there's this energy that they're talking about how when someone's mean to you or like if you get a troll, you treat that troll the same as you treat someone who gives you a beautiful comment or a beautiful, you know, like they're just, I love you, pile two. You're so incredible. Like you show up the same. For everybody, you're very balanced and you're very <laughs> dynamic at the same time. It's 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 a beautiful energy, and so there's like this, right? We're all multifaceted creatures, and so I feel like that's the thing. It's like you live in that multi-dimensional place where it's all those layers show, but nothing outside of you knocks you off your rocker or upsets the balance, right? Nothing outside of you does that. And so you're walking in your fate. And people talk about that. Like the people that know you, they talk about how you're living your journey. They talk about it. You don't just talk it. You're walking it. Like you're showing others how to walk this life. Whatever you offer. But this does feel there's, there's some sort of disconnect here between you and these people. Like these feel like people who are through a platform or through the internet this Aquarius is energy of the internet so let's get some tarot out on it and find out some more information source how does pile two's loved ones 
describe them. And this could be, you know, when we say loved ones here, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're just, they, they feel like they belong to your tribe. That's how it feels. So that's why they feel like they're considered your loved ones. They need to come and give you this message. How does Pile 2's loved ones describe them? They describe how fair you are. You're like the embodiment of justice. You're loving. You're strong. You make them feel like they can relate. How does Pile 2's loved ones describe them, Source? How does Pile 2's loved ones describe them? What can you tell us? Whoa. Okay. How does Pile 2's loved ones describe them? Another air energy coming out. More air energy. Libra energy. It's actually turning out to be really beautiful. Doesn't look like it, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is interesting because this same thing happened in Pile 1 with two... With an, with an air card, or a swords card, and a wands card, but different numbers. And the same way. Both in reverse. Like, that's that's a trip. Very synchronistic energies tonight across the board. This feels like this was absolutely the reading to do. Yeah, your perspective. Look, and how individual you are, how unique. You don't conform to society. And they talk about how you stand out, but it has to do with the way you view the world, right? With the hangman here, you're very comfortable in your skin. But how they describe you is someone who they can relate to because there's things that these people would never have dealt with. They would have never dealt with something that was leaving them stuck. They would have never, what was I saying? Like you have all the tools available and we have the four of swords talking about being hemmed in caged or stuck in a position where you're not able to get out and it feels like they use you as a way to describe things that they themselves have gone through you know having broken hearts in a lot of situations that left them feeling like the whole world was against them and then they came across you and now they feel like a sense of hope again because you're someone that they can see has gone through the same thing so you share your story it's like through your story, they're able to connect with you on a much deeper and emotional level. And they describe you as someone who's the world's person, if that makes sense. Like you're capable of connecting with everybody no matter what it is that they've been through because of the things that you've experienced or your story is very dark and heavy and overwhelming. And that's why you've had to learn this like disassociation from things because it's like you learn through those hardships that there's no reason to be so attached because the only reason you experienced those hardships was the attachment that you had to each and every situation so you're truly this embodiment of like a zen character someone that's very like buddhist like or someone that's very like monk like like you could be someone who practices celibacy you could be someone who practices the solitary journey the hermit's journey like you aren't someone who's like i'm out there looking for love i'm out here looking for my you know soulmate or whatever because i really feel like this is a very personal journey and what i'm experiencing on this personal journey weighs more to me than the hardships that i've experienced in my past trying to hold on to society's ideas and this is how they describe you they describe you as someone who doesn't conform they describe you as someone who stands out who's outrageous in the best possible ways they describe you as someone who no matter what happened to you because it's not just one broken heart it's not just one betrayal it's like betrayal after betrayal after betrayal and broken heart after broken heart after broken heart and upset after upset after upset and somehow none of that stuff broke you like it's like you experienced so many things that what the people who are talking about you like they've only experienced a fraction of what you've gone through and it's this energy that if pile two is able to have this beautiful outlook on life and still be this amazing person and still be this beautiful energy and still be able to shine then why am I letting this one upset change my life and leave me in a place where I feel like I need to take it out on everyone else? 
And so you've helped them forgive. You've helped them overcome. You've helped them let go. You've helped them surrender because of things they refuse to face. Situations they refuse to face. Circumstances they refuse to face with this knight of swords here. So they describe you as someone who's helped them overcome their own immature ideas about the world. Their own immature perspective because you're so grounded in who you are it's a very strong energy with the pisces or this is pisces next to taurus energy here and pisces and taurus are very good together we do have this energy of being very grounded while being singled out at the same time right knowing that there's a lot around you that supports you and being grateful for that but knowing that it's also imper imperative for you to be very connected to yourself and through the hangman energy this is someone who is very spiritual right the hangman is such a unique card you know a lot of people are like oh it's your perspective needs to change like when my hangman is in the upright it's talking about how he realizes he needs to see things from a different angle and so instead of looking at it the same way that everyone else looks at it he hangs himself by this branch with a rope so that he could see the world upside down and see what inspiration that gives to him. This also makes me follow the story of Odin. If you know who Odin is, he's the, the god of the Norse god, the father god of Norse mythology, okay? And he hung himself from the, uh, the Yggdrasil in order to gain wisdom. But the Yggdrasil, it was the the mirror, what, how do you say it, the mirror, mirror, mirror? Yeah, I think that's how you say it. The mirror, mirror that lived in, mirror, mirror was the name of the, the, the I can't remember the, the term of what he was, that lived in, in Yggdrasil, in the well, and all that, right? Anyways, long story short, mirror, mirror asked Odin to cut out one of his eyes, to sacrifice his eye to learn the wisdom, Right. And and what's unique about the fact that they're bringing this up is because for you, life is not about an eye for an eye. It's not you did this to me, so I'm going to do this to you. It's basically you did this to me. You showed me who you are. So later. And it's that action that everyone is talking about. That's how they describe you. They're like, you don't you don't try to seek revenge. You just you just move on. And everyone else is too busy trying to seek revenge. And yet you're trying to find inner stability and inner strength. And that's unique. And how that's something that has helped them. Like you're not trying. You stand out because you're not trying to stand out. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> like, let's get some clarifiers on it. Source, may you please have some clarifying cards for Pile 2's reading? How do their loved ones describe them? Look at this. We had one and two come out together. What do we have the one of? Yeah, the magician. Again, you have all the tools needed. Right? The magician talks about having all the suits. He has the cups. He has the wands. He has the swords. And he has the coins all at his disposal. Right? But again, this idea of like trying to blend in. But even you trying to blend in, you stand out. Right? You stand out. There's no blending in because you're that unique individual. But you have everything that you need. And, and they talk about that. That's how they describe you. They describe you as someone who never gets stuck for too long. Because you're capable of finding the finer things and the finer details and paying attention to those, those little things that matter. Right? And the balance, being able to balance yourself. But there's something here about really, truly balancing from unique ways. On top of the building, from the tree. Getting a higher perspective. Seeing things from a higher place. Like, you see things from a higher state of love. That's why I was saying, like, very zen-like, very, like, Buddhist-like um, monk. or and, and you don't have to be these things. What I'm saying is, like, it's like you just see things from a very spiritual aspect. And... It helps others to see things, their own life, from a spiritual place, even though it's new. Yeah, to see those broken hearts, the things that they've fought for, the things that they've tried to give back. You know, the Ten of Swords in the Tarot Marseille talks about 
meeting your match in an argument and doing the same thing over and over again and 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 yet it never works right like it just continues to fail and so they've tried to get revenge or they've tried to avenge themselves or they've tried to to get back an eye for an eye but you didn't you sacrificed one of the eyes it's like all right you turn the other cheek right like that that idea of turning the other cheek it's like if someone first slaps your right cheek and what was it the man asked jesus what do i do and jesus says turn the other cheek right and that's what you did. You turned the other cheek. You let him slap the other side. You're like, it's not going to change what I'm about to do. I'm not going to get mad at you for being and living in your hurt. I'm just going to move on because it means that we're not ever going to be able to vibe together until you vibe up. And so if you don't vibe up, then it's okay for me to vibe out. See, like, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> this is that energy. Look at this energy. She's like attacking this carrot. Like, ah, die, die. And this is how, this is what they describe you as not, not doing this. You don't do this. You see things from different place where everyone else is out to get revenge. Everyone else is out to be seen through being bright or being this or being that. And it's like, you don't see things that way. Your mind is very clear. That's how they describe you is your mind being very clear. Your mind being very concise and you cut things out like you're that the the sword like a thief in the night right you just cut it out you're like i'm gone i'm not gonna stick around and hope that you figure it out i'm gonna take care of me because i got too many other things that i gotta focus on and it's that energy that gives this group of people that i assume that you love them too like you know or maybe again you, you're kind of aloof like you have this very aloof energy about you like you're not like attached to them being in your life but you also appreciate and are grateful that they're in your life so there's that that compassion and kindness that comes from you in regards to them but it's like they love you because because of that too so interesting interesting let's get some oracles out on it for pile two source and please have some oracle cards thank you yeah, you've completed a cycle here with full moon completion. You let go. Like when we complete cycles, we let go of something that's plagued us. We let go of something that's been a repeat uh, cycle in our life. Now it's no longer a repeat cycle in our lives. We're just letting it go. Yeah, you're a very creative individual too is the energy coming through here. And it's funny because I love this look practice compassion see things from a fresh perspective I love that this came out we have the number 15 card six all about balance like you're you love all things like you see how he's holding this bird he loves this bird but he's also not attached to that bird being a part of him there's something beautiful about it being there in the moment that it's there and when it's gone there's something that's equally beautiful about that moment. And I feel like these two need to go together because that's exactly what they talk about. You're a fresh perspective in life, right? You've taught them how to have faith. Trust your faith in the situation. Like you've taught them to have faith that everything is happening to them for purpose, for a greater good, to help them transform their lives, to become a better version of themselves. This is how they describe you to others. Yeah, it has to do with your work, with beaver work coming out here. This is very clear. Like, this is something you work at. This is something you put a lot of effort into. And that's the other thing they describe is how hard you work. Like, your work ethic is on another level. Like, maybe when they would have given up, like, you no, you never did. You just kept showing up because you knew there was something better. You knew there was a greater purpose for the reason you were doing this. I don't feel like it had to do anything with the money because we haven't really been shown anything money-wise. Right? It has to do with the way that you see the world and gifting that, the light to others that may not have the ability to see it for themselves without you. Green man, synergy. Again, this balance. This is like the air. What the, the trees, right? The trees give us oxygen and we give the trees, what is it, CO, carbon? CO2? Yeah, so it's like they breathe in what we breathe out and we breathe in what they breathe out. There's a synergistic movement there 
or like the birds and the flowers, right? The birds, the birds, the bees and the flowers, the bees pollinate the flowers and then the flowers give the bees the nectar. That's what synergy is all about. It's like without one, the other ceases to exist, right? And that's exactly what I feel like why you've gone towards this and why you do what you do is because you realize without whatever it is that you have to offer, something ceases to exist, whether that's compassion, perspective, understanding, seeing things from a different place, a higher perspective, a higher place, a higher love. We have Leo, self-confidence, loyalty, and creativity. Yeah, you're very confident. They see that. They see that you're a very creative person, but above all, they describe you as someone who's extremely loyal to the cause. It's a revolution up in here. Shoot, you see this picture? Look at this connection with the universe you have. Look, we have Saturn right here. We're talking about the difficulties that you've gone through. It's like you've been through difficulty after difficulty after difficulty. But you see, it's like, I feel like she's showing and sharing some information with this lady here. Right? Or it could be vice versa. Maybe she's sharing energy or information with this lady here. However you feel it is. It doesn't matter. But there's this exchanging of energy under Saturn. Under the hardships. We don't have to give up because we've been through difficulties. We don't have to let go of our lives because we've been through difficulties. And the similarities here, like they each have half of a butterfly wing. Right? It's like, without you, I do not exist. That synergistic energy, it's like you realize without these individuals, you cease to exist. Whatever you offer ceases to exist. And that's why it feels like there's this deep sense of gratitude that comes with it. But also that, that aloofness that comes just from knowing from a higher perspective, we cannot be attached to the things that we desire. Right. And so it's like you're just deeply grateful for them when they're in that moment. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of compassion. There's a lot of deep connectivity that comes in the moment that they're there. And when they're not there, it's OK. There's nothing like, oh, my gosh, did I say the right thing? Did I do this? Did I do that? No, it's like you you had a fair exchange of energy and now you move on to the next thing. The reputable. We have 34 coming out here. It says, I live my life as if my guardian angels are watching over me. That's exactly it. You're not afraid to stand out. You're not afraid to be seen. You're not afraid to be different. Because you understand there's something more to this. And so this is how they're describing you to others. They describe you as someone who just is needed. What you offer is needed. It's it's the simple as that, but it is so much more complex because it's like you're a lifeline in so many people's lives. And it's like, whereas you may not be so attached to them and you're absolutely super grateful and they feel that gratitude, there is a group of individuals who are very, very attached to you and feel like you're the raft you're the savior in their life. You are the life jacket that they've been needing since they've been floundering in water for so long about to drown. And that's how they describe you. I mean, absolutely incredible energy coming through here. And I absolutely, I love that this was your card because it's so profound. Talking about how you're connected with the universal connection, this universal way of life. It's not one or the other. It's we're all in this together. It's a very beautiful, beautiful energy. I loved your reading. It's 26, 26 on my clock right now. So again, so, so synchronistic. I love it. If this is your reading, leave a star down below in the comments and say, I am universal love. And just let other pile twos know that they're not alone. You made it this far. You made it to the end of the reading. And if it resonated, leave me a thumbs up. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it there and get on out of here. I do want to take a quick second to thank your guides, your spirit messengers, your angel source, and my spirit guides for coming together to give us this absolutely beautiful message. And until next time, Pile 2, stay human. Bye. Hello, my fellow human. If you were drawn to this beautiful raw aquamarine or if you were drawn to this image or this card during the shuffle then this is going to be a reading on how does your loved ones describe you to others now the first two piles have been incredible completely different well i have no doubt that yours is going to be incredible too 
However, before we get into it, I do want to take a quick second to say that these are general readings, so please take what resonates, leave what does not, knowing that as you interact with the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing, it does allow me an opportunity to connect with you more directly to get you out more resonant readings. And if you are interested in supporting me further, all the links that you need, you will find them in the description box down below, where you can send me an email for a private message, knowing that there are a finite amount of spaces available each week. They do fill up really quick, really quickly, and it is first come, first serve. However, I will get you out more information as well as letting you know how many spaces are available. And my podcast link will be located down below where you can hit me up on over there it's just a place where we chill we talk about anything and everything it is a lot of fun i really enjoy doing it and i really hope to see you there awesome so with that being said let's go ahead and get into it i did have a message at the beginning of the reading i didn't say it on the shuffle but it did come through rather strongly in the shuffle it was like like the dark of night you still never let it stop you. That's what I heard. It has to do with you still let the darkness be your transformation. You never gave up. You never disbanded yourself. You were never from a place of, of like, even though you were in distress, you never let that stop you is the energy that was coming through. But we'll get a little bit more on it and see what else is coming through. So source for pile number three, how does pile number three's loved ones describe them to others how does pile three's loved ones describe them to others what can you tell us source okay so we've got south node okay i have to say this real quick the nodes have come up in every single reading every reading <laughs> a seven thousand aries energy yeah okay so you've had a lot of difficult relationships and they this is how they describe you they describe you as someone who's not had luck in relationships whether that's because you begin them really quickly or it seems like they're, they start with a bang and then they fizzle out, right? Especially with this Aries energy, okay? Remember, this is other people, so don't ever take what to heart what other people are saying. It does not mean that that's your truth. Even if it resonates with you, it means that it's just something that you're working on or something that you have an ability to face in that moment to change if that's what you choose to do so. But they are talking about how you've had a lot of upset relationships in your life and how it seems like it does seem like you're failed, you're you're doomed to fail at relationships. But again, that darkness energy coming through here that came out with this card, it's like even though in the dark of the night, you're still learning how to fly. It's like by yourself, you're alone here. You're not worried about it. You're, you're transforming. And it's like, you're becoming the light in the darkness. They're talking about how you become very brave and bold. And it's like your broken hearts have led you into being a leader it's like all your hurts and your upsets have have actually brought you into a place of being fearless, a place where they felt like they would have just crumpled up and they would have never looked at, or at the world again. And they would have just gone into a hole in hiding like you didn't do that. Right. You're facing that you're facing your fears head on, but it's still lessons that you're learning, lessons you're understanding. So you may be single and they feel like. A part of you being single is you still learning those valuable lessons that are necessary on this journey. And it's, it's not lessons that any of them would ever be willing to go in and encounter themselves, which is not a bad thing. It's not even a good thing. It's just simply as it is. And they describe you as someone who struggles in the relationship area, especially with the South Node coming out with the seventh house. We're talking about friendships, business situationships. We're talking about partnerships. We're talking about love, romantic relationships. You could be someone who has a lot of divorces under your belt, you know, and a lot meaning more than one, I guess. I don't know. Like, uh, you know, but if you have two divorces, they're like, oh, you know, like it feels like they're destined to fail. And it's just something that you're learning from though. It's like, you've taken all those hardships and now you're you're learning how to tackle your life from a different place. It's no longer being connected to connections. <laughs> Sorry, I laugh because it's when it comes out sometimes, it's just, whoa, okay, that's where we're going with that. All right, so, but that's the energy here. It's like, you're not stuck on being connected with someone just to get you to where you're going. And so it's like, right now, you're learning lessons. 
And this is how they're describing you. It's like you're learning a lesson of being alone and learning how to live life alone, which has been a real hardship for you in the past. You could be someone who quickly jumped into relationships without, you know, without worry about what was going to happen. And then when your heart was broken, you were just kind of like, whoa, like, why did, why did I have to experience that? Whoa, okay. Yeah, the block almost coming in here. Yeah, you blocked yourself from your blessings. That's what they just said. People describe that. They describe you blocking yourself from your blessings for not having the discernment that you needed at one point in time. Right? But again, it, it's like you let that darkness, you let that upset, you let that hurt and that pain and the suffering, you let that become the fuel of your change. And now you're, you're flying, you're taking flight, but you're not what everyone expected you to be, which is actually a very beautiful thing, right? Which is very beautiful. But let's get some more out on it. So Source, how does Pile 3's loved ones describe them? Something about your lips. I feel like people fall in love with you when they kiss you. I don't know why that's coming through, but that is something that's very strong coming through right now. So maybe that's something that people have talked about is like your kiss. There's something irresistible about your kiss, something very irresistible about your lips. They describe you as, what is it? A love at first sight type of person. Yeah, they just gave me the ace of swords. I'll show you in just a second. I was, I was talking and it came out. Yeah, it's like a love at first sight. Like people fall in love with you very quickly and you might be a very deep romantic at heart. And it's it, like people were able to bamboozle you into believing that they loved you. And then you would get really into some really hard, hard situations. Some abusive, some emotionally difficult situations these definitely feel like people who've known you for a while or at least seen part of your journey right this could be co-workers it could be family it could be friends when we talk about loved ones the it's a very wide spectrum right it is a very wide spectrum so how does pile three's loved ones describe them very simple very simple not that you're simple, but like, it's like you're learning how to live simply. Yeah. Without all those other things, you're learning how to shine on your own and you're learning how to embody the divine feminine. Whether you're a man or a woman, that doesn't matter here. It's like learning how to nurture and love yourself, right? This is connected with Venusian energy. Venus is connected with goddess Aphrodite. Aphrodite felt she was too good to be in love with anybody. She was all about herself. She was all about taking care of herself and being alone. And she was okay with being alone. And we have that clarification coming through here with the Empress in the upright on the bottom of the deck. Right? Aphrodite didn't care. People fell in love with Aphrodite all the time. Why is she the goddess of love? Because everybody loved Aphrodite. Right? The same thing. People fall in love with you very easily. And it's like, that was the trick. Like, it was like, where they thought they were really in love with you, they were in love with you, but then there was such a difference in vibrational levels that you probably mirrored back a lot of their hurts and their pains to them with the South Node energy here, that that would make them feel resentful and hurt and painful. And so whatever it was that that person that was in love with you was feeling, they started putting you through that misery because they felt like it was your fault. But then the minute that you left or you were no longer in their life, the healing began because they were no longer trying to lash out. It was just now the only thing that could come is the healing, right? Hurt people hurt people. And then now you weren't there for them to hurt any longer. It's not like it was conscious. It was a very subconscious act. The healing began, and then after the healing began, I feel like a lot of your exes, a lot of your, your past friends, they've all come back to you, and you're like, what do you want? Like, I don't need you in my life. I've learned to live without you, and I'm okay with that. It's not like you're mean or anything like that. That's not what it is, but that's, what, that's how they describe you. They describe you as someone who's willing to just be alone on your own. Yeah, you outgrew a lot of situations and you put yourself onto a positive path. Situations that made you feel stuck, hopeless. Yeah, and they absolutely were romantic situations here with the Knight of Wands. But really what we're talking about is you moving on. 
you moving on from most of these situations, even if they weren't romantic situationships, okay? Like, this is something that left you feeling diminished and without your glow, right? They took all your light. You, you're, you're learning in the darkness. Can't pick it up here. You're learning in the darkness. You're not learning in the bright sunlight here because the sun's in reverse here at the middle of the reading. And you realize that this was something that you weren't, you were too good for. You realized that and you moved on. And so your loved ones describe you as someone who is, is a beautiful person inside and out. And you moved on from situations that you were too good for. That's how they describe you. You moved on from situations that were causing a lot of heartbreak, a lot of indecision, a lot of upset. And you realize that you were too big for it. You know, every time I see this two of swords, it really makes me think that this flower, I always see a koi fish. I don't see this flower. I see a koi fish and koi fish will grow as big as their environment will let them. So sometimes you'll have koi fish that are little goldfish. Why are they goldfish? That's, you know, like that same idea, right? They're little itty bitty baby things and they'll never get bigger than that because that's how big their environment is. They've already grown to the stent of their environment. Here you have this gigantic koi fish in the midst of this tank. There's no swimming. There's no turning. There's no enjoying life. And the only way out is to jump out, to get away from it. And that's exactly what I always feel like with this two swords. It's this energy of like, I got to go. I can't stick around for this anymore. I'm, I'm completely done with this. I've learned all I can from this. And all I'm learning from this is that dark night of the soul energy. It's broken heart energy. I cannot survive living in a broken heart all the time. And so the only thing you had left to do is to take care of yourself. And so you were granted, you were granted assistance and throw away by source to get through and to get beyond tricky people. Look, we have three and three coming out together. This is very interesting. This has happened in all the readings. Two numbers, like three and three, and other numbers would come out together. We had eight and eight, four and four, and now three and three. Very synchronistic these readings are today, like extremely synchronistic. But that's just it. It's like you found a straight and narrow and you let yourself take it. You let yourself overcome this stalemate, being stuck, not having an option. You realize there was an option. If I can't go right, if I can't go left and I'll just go straight ahead, I'm not going to get stuck anymore in this because it's hurt and it's pain. And so with the Knight of Wands coming out here, we have this idea of uprooting your life and letting go of something that in the past you ran towards. You know, you have this indication with the horse, how he's pointed towards the sun, but both you and the horse are looking towards the Empress. It's like, where's this past incident was something that was necessary for you to embody the empress it is something that weighs heavily on you and it's something that you've had to learn how to overcome through nurturing and care and loving yourself there was no person that could fill this void of, from you leaving this situation whether this was a work situation ship a romantic situation ship a friendship whatever it was like there was a void that was left and you realized that the void was in you and that's what people are describing you as someone who felt the void within and used that as a reason and a means to fall in love with self not trying to fill it with other people because maybe there were times along the way where you did try to fill that with others like you're like, oh, I need someone to fill that. But then it never lasted very long and it quickly fell apart. And it's that constant falling apart that it's like, I can't, I cannot do this anymore. So I have to be honest with myself. I have to be clear with myself. I have to understand how I'm feeling. And these are all things that people describe you as someone who's now taking the time to understand these aspects of self. Can we please get some clarifying cards for pile number three, source? Thank you. Can we please have some clarifying cards for pile number three? Clarifying cards for pile number three. Thank you. Is that clarifying card for pile number three, source? Whoa, that is way too many. Let's take a look at what we got here, though. 
So we have the Five of Swords, the Ten of Swords, and the King of Cups. Yeah, exactly. This makes so much sense. You were in a lot of upsetting situations, right? Situations that left you feeling like you couldn't gain balance again. Situations where you're constantly arguing, constantly emotionally exhausted. And finally, you had to realize, okay, these situations are just taking me away from where I need to be at, which is myself. Right? You have to pull back your skirt for yourself and realize that these little these are little hiccups along the journey that were humongous. It's not to devalue what you've gone through. That's not what's going on here. It's just saying that if all I do is focus on these things and they're in the past, they're so much smaller than they were when I was facing them head on. If I don't pull myself away from those things, I'll never be free of it. And so we did. Please have one more card here, Source. Please have one more one more card. Yeah. You had to see yourself. Why do I have that song right now? You light up my life. Um, who is that? Leanne Rhymes, I think. Yeah, it's like you had to light up your own life. You had to light it up. You had to let it go. You had to let go of the karmic cycles that were all around you. Causing heartbreak. Causing situations that you didn't want to be in. You're like, is this the life I want to live in? And so people describe you as someone who's willing to let go of the past. And not live in it anymore. And take control. Like we have the eight of coins coming out. Someone who's vicious in their hustle vicious yes in a good way and in a bad way in a good way because people are impressed at how much you've completed in such a short time once you focused on yourself and in a bad way because there's a lot of other energies coming in that are jealous about that and this could be people who you love people who love you but it's just you're vicious at the way you work you have tamed your heart and your focus onto what it is that you want. And you're bringing that abundance to you. And you're working slowly but surely. And you're not letting society tell you who you need to be anymore. You're not letting others tell you who you need to be anymore. Look, we have the hangman here. Yeah, you've changed your perspective for good. You learned how to create through the hardships. You learned how to see things in a new light you learned that you had a choice when maybe at one point it felt like you didn't because all you were seeing was the blackest part of the night but then when you embodied and embraced your light you became something that you could hold on to right yeah look with the queen of wands you destroyed your demons you destroyed them you embodied this beautiful strong sexy confident individual in spite of these situations you went through in spite of all the hard hardships you went through you took action for yourself you chose to see that you were too big for the situation too high vibrational right not better not worse it was just not a match for where you were going you have bigger sea to swim in and you chose that and you chose to see that about yourself right in the black of night you chose to see that about yourself and sometimes it's not easy right sometimes it's not it's like overcoming these things through through the beauty of life is not easy we have number 12 we have 12 12 out here we have kindness fruit bat flying fox so you may see 12 12 a lot or 12 21 but do you see this like you saw your ugly parts the darkest of nights bats usually fly at night they're usually nocturnal again this idea of being in the black of night and you are the one that showed your darkness the love the kindness the compassion it needed to say you're a part of me these hardships are a part of me. They're a part of my experience. But that doesn't mean that I have to live in constant fear of them. I can still learn to love myself. I, myself. I can still learn to experience what life is meant to be. And so you found abundance through that. You're someone who encourages others to 
not let their darkness keep them from what they want. And that's how people describe you. Maybe you want to be seen as the sunshine, but you're not. You're someone that's seen as the black of night in the best way. Because it's like, if, if pile three can walk in the darkest of dark nights with a new moon and you can't see anything, there's no stars in the sky because the clouds are covering the skies, but they're not afraid to walk a path that is unseen, that is unknown, then I can too. And that's how your loved ones describe you. As someone who's become completely stable, another eight. We have 888 out on the table here. Who's learning to find their happiness. Who's become free of a situation that held them. Held them in a tiny little cage. Healing ancestral curses. Your ancestors walk this journey with you. They did not leave you alone. You're healing generational curses that have gone back a millennia. And you're probably coming into some really incredible gifts as we talk to you. Look, we have House 7 making another appearance. Profound relationships, intimacy, and romantic partnerships. You are healing ancestral curses when it comes to love relationships any kind of love relationship like it doesn't matter you're healing them whoa okay that was quick so we have appreciate this moment with number 33 and your pile three Whew. synchronicities off the chain for you on pile three S off the chain if this is your pile leave a bird the little dove down in the comments and say i am healing ancestral curses claim that claim that let the universe know that this is your pile let other pile threes know that they're not alone too okay but we have appreciate this moment every situation is an opportunity to grow and to find love exactly that's exactly the energy that we've gotten here like you're using all those upsets as a reason to become a better version of yourself and that's how they're talking about you they're describing you as someone who doesn't let the hardships be who you are like you're not a bitter person you never became a bitter person and that's an inspiring situation because it means that that's hope for others who have experienced hardships we have 37 which is 10 act as if your partner is here whether you have someone in your life or not act as if they are with you so you will always consider them what was i saying like you're okay walking alone and because of that, because you're not looking to draw in a romantic partner, you're drawing in a romantic partner. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not here to be like, and you're like, yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. You know, like, that's fine. It's just, I'm just saying like, that's part of it. Like when it hits you, when it happens, you're, you're not going to believe it. You're probably, it's not that you're going to turn away from it, but you're not going to believe it when it happens. We also have a moth here on this picture right here. Right. And so there's something about moths that really really mean something to you which is odd but moths are like the butterflies of the night right they're they're attracted to the light and that's the thing it's like in the darkness like you're looking for the light no matter what it's not like the light burns you it's not like the light kills you or anything like that it's like you're looking for the light and every night you look for the brighter light look <laughs> I love this. We have ancient sh ancient healing wisdom with shaman here. Yeah, what was I saying? You're coming into some pretty unique gifts. This would not surprise me if you were becoming a, a very good healer. But this is how you're being described as someone who is healing. Healing. We got that from the very beginning, that you're healing. You're the one who has been there for yourself, right? Like Aphrodite, she's the one that's been there for herself. And they're talking about it like you're taking a step back from these constant connections that you've had to say, whoa, hold on. This is not working for me. This is what I don't want. I know what I don't want. So how do I figure out what I do want? And they're describing you as someone who's taking time to figure that out. I cannot with you, pile three. We have the south node destined to release coming out. I can't. I can't with you, Pile 3. This has been incredibly synchronistic. Like, this is, this pile is off the chain. 
off the chain. So we've already talked about your card so much. Let's just find out what it is. The truthful with number 33. Ah! <laughs> Look at this. I speak my truth and expect everyone I care about to do so too. So they see you as someone who's incredibly truthful, has a lot of integrity, a lot of honor. Look at this. We have the hangman, which is 12, which is broken down into three. We have 12 with the fruit bat, flying fox, which is three. So you have three, 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 three. You're pile three. I cannot with you right now. I cannot. You got south node came. Look, the two astrological cards that I got were both your dice that came out the seventh house and the south node absolutely incredible incredible pile three you're seen as a light in the darkness but it's because of your darkness that makes you so bright an absolutely beautiful beautiful story and I wish you all the best and I'm truly honored to be in this place and have this opportunity to connect with you in this way so if this resonated leave me a thumbs up but i am going to go ahead and leave it there and get on out of here i do want to take a quick moment to thank your guides your spirit messengers your angel source and my spirit guides for coming together to give us this absolutely phenomenal phenomenal reading and until next time pile three stay human bye